Okay, the last section, uh, 7.9, coordinate vectors. Here. Uh, in a finite dimensional space, uh, a basis is closely related to a coordinate system. Okay? Uh, in this uh, section, we introduce coordinate system based on non standard basis. Okay. Mm -hmm. If alpha is an ordered basis for Rn, then any vector x in Rn is uniquely expressed as a linear combination of vectors in alpha, as follows. Okay? Any vector can be written as a linear combination of the basis vectors. And CIs are called the coordinate of the vector x related to the basis alpha, isn't it? Okay? If, the, if, if we have a different basis, then this coefficient should be different. And this coordinate of the given vector should be different. Okay. That's the whole idea. The scalars CIs in one is called the coordinate of X related, uh, the, related to the ordered basis alpha here. Furthermore, the column vector in, R, in Rn, this, uh, which, whose uh, entries are CIs, is called the coordinate vector of X related to the ordered basis alpha and denoted by this. Okay. So if we have a vector X then we, uh, and the basis, ordered basis alpha, then we can find the coordinate vector, which is this related to the basis alpha. Okay. We can, you, can do, you can do it always, because you can solve the linear system of equation. Okay, here. If x is in R3, is given like this, then, and we have a standard basis, <laughs> alpha, then x can be written as this. So, this coordinate vector uh, of this vector with the, the standard basis can be written as 2, minus 3, and 5, like this. Isn't it? But if we have a, a vector x1 and x2, x3, and these are linear independent vectors, so this uh, forms a basis for R3, and write this uh, x, which is 1, 2, 3, uh, and uh, find the coordinate vector x, alpha related to the basis alpha for R3 with this basis. Then let this x vector as a linear combination of these xi's and then, then we have this form. Then we solve this linear system of equation to have ci's. Then we can find c1, c2, c3 without much difficulties by just solving linear system of equation by hand or by Sage. Okay? Then, this coordinate vector of this given one with respect to the given basis alpha, that's going to be minus 3, 4, 1. This shape and these shapes are different. Isn't it? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, same vector can be written in a different way. CRM. 7.91 says if alpha is a basis for Rn, then uh, and uh, xy is in Rn and scalar c uh, is in R, then uh, this uh, the coordinate vector of x plus y with respect to a basis alpha can be written in this way. We can split it and scalar <coughs> multiple of x, the coordinate vector of Scalar multiple of x on x, uh, c, uh, scalar, uh, cx uh, with respect to the basis alpha can be written in this way. In general, this uh, linear combination of uh, the yi vectors like this can be written in this way. Okay. What the whole idea of this uh, uh, process is a uh, change of basis. Let alpha and beta we are two different ordered bases for Rn. Then in the following, we consider the relationship between x with respect to the basis alpha and the x coordinate vector x of x with respect to the basis uh, beta. Okay, then relationship 
is like this. If we, in this standard basis, this point can be written as a 2-1. But if we have a different basis like this, then coordinate vector of the same point with respect to this, this basis can be written as 1-1. One, one. Because 1 times this plus 1 times this is going to be the 2-1. Okay, so same vector can be uh, written in the, the different ways uh, with different bases. Let x is a linear combination of uh, y i's, then coordinate vector of x can be written with respect to bases b can be written in this way. Then the coordinate vector, uh, this uh, re re uh, related to alpha can be expressed as this. Then what is going to be a relationship between this and this. This and this. What is going to be a relationship between these two? Here it is. Okay, this is a relationship. Let yj alpha is a column vector like this. And then form a matrix P uh, whose column vectors are these yj's standard basis, standard, uh, the, the coordinate vector of yj with respect to the basis alpha like this, then we have a n by n matrix like this. Then x alpha, x, uh, the coordinate vector of x with respect to alpha can be written in this way, which is a product of this matrix and this vector, which is this. This is the relationship between these two different coordinate vector of the same vector with respect to the two different bases. This is a relationship. Okay. So if we uh, so if we have this matrix P, then we don't have to worry about uh, these changes because we can always uh, come and go from one to the other. In this equation, matrix P transforms a coordinate vector this uh, to another coordinate vector this. Uh, hence, this matrix P, whose columns are the coordinate vector of Y i's with respect to the basis alpha is called the transition matrix from ordered basis beta to, o, to ordered basis alpha and denoted by this. Uh -huh. From beta to alpha, from beta to alpha, from basis beta to basis alpha. So can be written in this way. From beta to alpha. Okay. So x alpha, uh, this uh, can be written in this way. This transformation is uh, uh, called change of basis. This is a general form of change of basis that you have learned in middle school and high school uh, math classes. Note that the change of basis does not modify uh, the no nature of a vector, but it changes coordinate vectors. The following example uh, shows that. Let alpha be a standard basis for R2 and Y1, Y2. Let it be a standard base and let and uh, yeah y one and y two be given in this way. Then for the two different ordered bases alpha and beta whose uh, uh, form is like this, then find the transition matrix P from basis beta to basis alpha. And uh, the second, uh, suppose uh, x beta is given like this, then find the coordinate vector like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. And third, for x, show the equation to hold. Okay, find this transition matrix first. P, you know the the we we are uh, the the first column of P is uh, the y i the image of y i in uh, the basis alpha. So coordinate vector of y1 in terms of basis alpha. And the second column is the coordinate vector of y2 with respect to the basis alpha. So we, you, you can find this by solving the linear system of equation so like this. So, so we need to compute the coordinate vectors like this. So we set up the linear equations and then solve, solve it. So it gives us 1, 2, and minus 1 and 1 here. So we form a matrix P whose first column is this and second column is that. Then 
we can ch easily find uh, this uh, coordinate vector of x in, uh, with respect to the basis alpha uh, with this matrix. Okay, so one minus one and seven is going to be the answer from here. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, since uh, x uh, can be written in this way, and uh, uh -huh. and uh, yeah, this. Uh, this, uh, the same vector can be written in this way as well. The linear combination of y1 and y2 in terms of this. So, uh, the coordinate vector of x with, with, with respect to standard basis is just 3, 9. But coordinate vector of x uh, with respect to the basis beta is going to be 4, 1. With this matrix, we can double check uh, this whether the, this relation holds or not. And as you see, this clearly holds. So this uh, formula that I introduced perfectly works OK. OK? So change of basis is just, just, just multiply a uh, transition matrix. Then finding the, the transition matrix is just uh, uh, solving a linear system equation to find each column vectors. That's it. Next, example four. Suppose we have uh, these three vectors and, uh, and another three vectors. They are, we, and they are all linear independent, so we can tell uh, these two are uh, basis, vec basis for R3. So let alpha and beta be uh, two different basis for R3 and find this. How? All you have to do is just write y, y, i with respect to the basis x, i. Isn't it? and solve this three linear system of equation for y1 and y2 and y3. How do you solve this linear system of equation? This is a linear system of equation for y1. This is a linear system for the y2. And this is a linear system of equation for y3. We solve the same, we solve these three different linear system of equation with the same matrix A. How we do? We just build up three by six matrix like this and find the RREF, REF of it, then RREF of it, then we have this form, which means the first comes gives the first column of the matrix P, and second gives the second column of the matrix P, and third gives the third column of the matrix P. So P, which is a the transition matrix from basis beta to alpha can be written as this 3 by 3 matrix, which was obtained by solving three different linear system of equation at once. Okay? And you can check those with uh, this to find this matrix. Okay? That's it. So this is a very easy way to do it. So to finding the transition matrix uh, is, uh, is just uh, one of the simple things to do, if we have a right concept on these relationships. Okay, I think we have one more theorem here, 7.9.2. Suppose alpha and beta are two different ordered bases for Rn and, and P be the transition matrix from beta to alpha. Then P is invertible and its inverse, P inverse is also a transition matrix from basis alpha to basis beta. Okay? So P inverse can be written in this way. So P and P inverse has, a, has a these relationships. P was uh, the transition matrix from alpha to beta, beta to alpha, and P inverse the transition matrix from alpha to beta. So for the two, two bases alpha and beta in R3, you can find the transition matrix Q from basis alpha to beta, and coordinate vector the X with respect to the basis beta, for a given this. Since we have this matrix, just multiply this matrix to here to, to, to get that. And that's the whole idea. Transition matrix B can be found. P is this, so P, Q is a P inverse, so we can easily find Q and just multiply Q on here to get this 6, 8, and minus 9. This is the coding for that problem, and we checked these answers are right. That's it. That's the end of chapter 7. You have uh, plenty of problems, and also m many of you already solved the most of these problems. 
And we will, uh, we will uh, upload the, all the solutions for ch problems in chapter 3. Uh, by whom? Yeah, Ms. Ju. Okay, you are in charge. That's, uh, that's it. Any questions for chapter 7? There are many problems. And this is uh, yeah, the first for ICM. And next week, we will start chapter 8. Any questions?